Hello, everyone. Um, I know you can't see me, but my name is Sean Garrett, and this is my channel. Uh, this is the first video of hopefully many more to come, talking about really all things ceramics, whether it's techniques, um, histories, and just basically answering a whole bunch of questions that I wish I knew going into it. This first video is going to be basically just about my general setup so that um, as we get into future videos, you have a better understanding of what's going on in all the areas that you can't see. So the wheel that I'm using right now is a Brent wheel. It's a Model B, which is uh, just one of their more basic wheels. It's not necessarily their best or their strongest. It was what I could afford in high school. Um, what I have on top is not actually the usual piece that comes with the top. This is what's called the ceramic wheel head. Um, it's a basic metal that works pretty well. I added some bolts in so that you can add what's called a ceramic bat. Now, these come in all shapes, sizes, and types. This one's just plastic. Fits right in. And then what you have around the wheel is what's called the splash pan. The splash pan is comprised of two pieces that can be taken apart, and it collects all of the guck so that everything doesn't just spill out over the wheel and all over my feet. Uh, this wheel, like most, has a pedal. Um, the pedal can adjust its speed very much like a car, but the difference between this pedal and that of a car is that Let's actually turn this on for it. When you push down the pedal, it'll spin, much like the wheels of a car, but if you let go, it'll keep the same speed that it had before. So if I want it fast, I could put faster, slower, all the way off. Now, this wheel in particular, not all wheels have it, but it has the ability to spin counterclockwise like it is now, turn off, or spin clockwise. That comes in handy later because um, it's very useful to be able to spin both directions for a whole wide range of things. Um, the first and foremost is that um, most potters that I've met and known um, will have it spin counterclockwise. And most potters that I know are also right-handed. Both of those come into play because if you have clay that's spinning counterclockwise and I'm touching it, the clay will spin, touch my fingertips here, and move all the way out nice and smoothly. And so when it's spinning counterclockwise, most people will be working from the right side so that it cleanly moves out their fingertips. Versus if I was going to move on the left as it's spinning counterclockwise, it will go and it'll hit my fingertips a lot. It'll feel like these are immediately hitting a wall. And so what you'll see later is that I will be working generally on the right side as it spins counterclockwise. Um, I had said before that some wheels only spin one direction, some have the ability to spin both. If it can only spin one direction, usually it's counterclockwise. And so that's what I'll be showing because that will be the normal for most people. Now, um, counterclockwise doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be right-handed to use it. Um, a lot of times, teachers will do demonstrations where it's spinning counterclockwise, but they'll say if you're a left-hander, then try spinning it clockwise and maybe you'll like it that way. I'm actually left-handed but I still prefer counterclockwise. I've tried both directions. I prefer this way, and so I'll be spinning it counterclockwise most of the time. Now we've covered wheel, splash pan, pedal. Let's cover some of the basic tools that I have. So, these are just the ones that I use day to day. I have buckets and buckets of many other tools that I will use from time to time, but these are the standards. Now, it's comprised of kind of necessities and then some general others. 
Um, first and foremost, the three main ones that I think are most important are these three, where you have your sponge, very standard size and shape. You've got your needle tool, sharp needle so that you can scrape, cut, carve, slice things off, make things nice and pretty. And then you have a wire tool um, so that typically it's to slice larger pieces of clay or if you have a piece on the wheel so you can slice it off. These are my three standards. These I'll always have. Then we'll get into what are called ceramic ribs. Now ribs can come in all shapes, sizes. Um, I use a wooden one and I use two metal ones. Now they also come in rubber, they come in plastic, they come in um, whole shapes and sizes. You could find a pretty stone, could be a rib. And then these last tools are, we have a kind of a wooden, wooden feathling knife. And then two other tools that I use specifically um, that are just very handy. I just call them kind of wooden doodads. They do various things. They have various shapes. They'll typically have something on one side and another. And they come in handy for a variety of thing, things, whether it's dealing with opening up little holes in bottles to shaping up handles and making sure making sure everything is clean cut and happy. So these are my general tools. These are all the ones that I'll typically use. Now these don't include any of the tools that I use for trimming. That will be a whole slew of other videos. Now I have one bucket that has my tools on one side and I have one bucket that uses water on the other side. Water is very handy and is very much a necessity for later on. Um, it's something that we'll include and talk about in later videos as we get to our first project that will be a multi-video project on how to make a mug. So, first video, hope you enjoy. Um, if you're excited and you're interested in seeing more of the things that I make and more of the videos that I'll be including on this channel, please hit subscribe, please hit the bell icon, all those lovely things so that you can keep up to date with those future projects. But this is just the first one to get you set up and understood on generally what you're going to be seeing, viewing, and understanding. Thanks.